Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian in Arlington, Virginia, where we're covering the 2017 Surface Navy Association's annual conference and trade show. Our coverage here is sponsored by Raytheon, and we're honored to have with us legendary Surface Navy warrior uh, Bob Conrad, who's the program director at Huntington Ingalls Industries, uh, sunny Washington, D.C. Uh, office. Bob, thanks so much for joining us. Vago, great to be here. <laughs> <laughs> we were thinking about doing the comedy version of this, but we're going to be we're going to be serious. So, um, uh, you know, you guys have had a lot of activity. You know, you've worked the National Security Cutter Program for the Coast Guard for a long time, uh, as well as the, the the frigate derivative of that ship, which is which has been one of one of your priorities and one of your important projects. Um, talk to us a little bit about the National Security Cutter and where it is. You know, the ninth ship has gone under contract now. The Coast Guard worked really hard. Congress really helped the Coast Guard on on that front. Um, bring us up to speed. You know, are we likely to see um, Hull 10, 11, and 12 as some folks in the Coast Guard have always wanted out of this program? That's a lot, Vago, <laughs> but, uh, but let me take a stab. The, uh, we're very proud of the National Security Cutter Program. We did award on 30 December, the Coast Guard awarded the, uh, the ninth ship. Uh, and in fact, just two weeks prior to that, we delivered the sixth ship. So six ships delivered at sea, performing superbly. And the Coast Guard feedback to us has been they love those ships, absolutely love them production line is hot. Uh, the ninth ship will come in a year and a half after the eighth, which is efficient for us. We're more efficient at about one year centers, but, but this is going to be a good ship for us and we're delivering on time and under budget. So again, all factors the Coast Guard is uh, very much in favor of. Uh, with respect to ships beyond nine, we're hopeful. Uh, there was a Senate mark that included long lead time for the tenth ship. Uh, and again, based on performance and comments of the Commandant, uh, the need is there, the, uh, the price is uh, reasonable, uh, we're coming in on schedule. The factors that would support an efficient production line are all in place. So I think the Coast Guard and, and maybe uh, the Congress uh, are considering whether or not uh, more ships would, uh, would make sense. The ship class replaces uh, 12 ships with eight, that was the original plan, now they're up to nine. 12 for 12 what might make more sense. And the Commandant says that he's got intelligence on as much as 80% of the drug traffic, for instance, in the Caribbean, but only 20% of the assets that can intercept. So more ships just makes more sense. Do you think, where are you guys on the cost curve and what, what, how much are these ships coming in at? Uh, because pretty much right now, everybody is debating how to get more for your money. And you guys have worked cost reduction very, very aggressively on that program over the years. We're about 20% under where we were on the first ship. Our, our last ship that we just put on contract was at a value, current year dollars, less than the sixth ship in the class. I mean, so we're, the prices are coming down significantly. And what was the unit price, if you don't mind me asking? Well, the contract award price on NSC9 in December, again, that's for production and delivery, was $486 million. Um, let's talk about the national security, um, uh, uh, the, excuse me, the, the frigate version of the ship. Um, you guys from the very beginning have posited that as a potential frigate replacement for the U.S. Navy. Uh, there was the national fleet concept that goes back uh, a long time, which dates me a little bit, where the Coast Guard and the Navy were looking at maybe a common ship. Those paths diverged. The Navy went down the littoral combat ship path, uh, and then went down to the two versions of the of the LCS. Um, there was an opportunity two years ago for the Navy to change gears. Uh, the Navy decided it was going to stick with LCS, but then go to a frigate version of it. What's the outlook for the navalized version of that, whether in the United States or elsewhere around the world? So when the Navy uh, took a look at this subject, it was two and a half years ago, uh, summer of '14. Uh, there was a small surface combatant task force study. Uh, we submitted the patrol frigate as our, uh, our candidate for that, uh, for that program. Uh, we basically took the NSC, which is a Navy standard design for practical purposes in our minds, and, uh, and weaponized it to some extent. Closed in the uh, stern ramp, uh, added a Mark 41 VLS launcher, uh, upgraded the gun from 57 to 76 millimeters, and put CRAM on as a self-defense system. We uh, we, again, because of the hot production line and the existing design, uh, we, we came to a conclusion that we could make that design change, order long lead time in about 18 months and produce the ship in about three years. So four and a half years from going on contract, we could deliver them a full up frigate, which would be a substantial upgrade from where the Fig 7s were, even at their early introduction. And, I mean, the Navy, for many reasons, went in a different direction, but we've had uh, ongoing discussions with some international customers on that. 
We are not presently on contract with anyone, but we're keeping the design alive and available. And as long as we have the capacity or the capability to opportunity to transition from a hot NSC design, which NSC 9 is helping us with, that still remains a very viable candidate as a frigate for whatever Navy may find it useful. Um, and uh, one of the things, you know, speaking of frigates, uh, you know, the last time I think we saw each other was aboard uh, Peter Willemus, uh, that was uh, the Danish frigate, the Ivor Hoodfeldt ship that was uh, visiting Baltimore uh, a couple of months ago toward the latter part of the year. Um, you know, you guys uh, are partnered on, on looking at concepts and, and the future. Um, where do you see that relationship going? How do you guys work together? Uh, and on, on what kind of projects and programs do you see that uh, cooperation between you guys and, and OMT flourishing? We've worked with OMT for uh, 15 or more years. Uh, they have some technologies and some processes that uh, they used in their shipyard in Denmark before it, uh, uh, it was retired that we've, we've utilized on, in our shipyard. And, and it's, they've helped us with our shipyard of the future as we upgrade our yard. At the same time, they had a modern design, the Ivor Hoodfeldt, uh, last delivered, the last ship of that class was, I think, delivered in 2011 or 12. Right. Uh, it's a modern design. It's got lots of volume. It's uh, modular, uh, and there are some attractive features in it, uh, different than the NSC. It's a different size ship. Right. It's about 6,600 tons. 6,600 as opposed to 4,400, 4,500 for the NSC. Uh, so in any case, uh, we we have had some discussions with them about op or offering that ship in another country with us in support uh, of their primary design. Uh, hard to say where that goes. It's really it's customer uh, driven. Uh, you got to find the right customer, and uh, they need to recognize the value in it. At this point in time, we're trying to uh, to put the story together in a way that will attract interest, and we'll see where it goes. You, are you at liberty to say what the country is? Well, in that particular, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I got that close. I thought I could get it. Bob, thanks very very much. Best of luck on the show. Thank you. Always a pleasure, Bago. <laughs>